the Sanderson sisters are back for a nostalgic, fun-filled sequel, stacked with Easter eggs and deep-cut references to the original movie. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and I've been re-watching and pausing Hocus Pocus 2 to uncover all the amazing little details you might have missed. The movie begins with a wicked flashback to Salem 1653 and Winifred's 16th birthday, and the creepy spider that young Sarah gives to Winnie you will love it. is a sly reference to Sarah's love of spiders in the original movie. What a pretty spider! The costume department also honoured Sarah's affection for the creepy crawlies on her new costume, which has sleeves made to look like crocheted spider's webs. And if you look really closely, you'll spot some spiders embroidered among the floral and thorn design on her bodice. After fleeing the Salem mob into the Forbidden Woods, the three young sisters form a calming circle and amusingly think about the reverend screaming and other deliciously terrible things. Think soothing thoughts, smell of fresh mud. The reverend screamed when he saw the spider. This moment calls back to how the adult Sandersons form a circle when they're stressed out in the first movie and the hilariously awful things they think about. Rabbit bat, black death, <laughs> mummy scorpion pie. The Come Little Children tune that the young sisters hear in the woods is the same one in the original film. And notice how it's young Sarah who becomes entranced by the song, reflecting the fact that she's the one who'll sing it to lure the children of Salem over 400 years later. Now, pay close attention to the witch mother in her costume in this scene, as the embroidered eye on her outfit reappears many times throughout the movie. It's a reference to the eye on the spellbook that she gifts to Winnie. And Winifred also has eyes embroidered on her costume when she returns later on. The brooch around the witch mother's neck is also identical to the one used as Winnie's belt buckle, and the stones match the colour of each of their outfits. Moving on to present day Salem, and the name of the school Becca, Izzy and Cassie go to is Samuel Skelton, the name of a real life Puritan who settled in Salem and founded the first church in the town. And notice when Izzy arrives, the scarf she's wearing is covered in eyes, another creepy little reference to book. While Becca is waiting outside the principal's office, the assistant may be wearing a ladybird outfit, but these look a lot like Mickey or Minnie Mouse hands. In the sequel, we discover the Sanderson sisters' old home has been converted into Gilbert's old Salem magic shop, and the cauldron of cats filled with stuffed toy black cats is likely a nod to Thackeray Binks, who knocked over the witch's cauldron filled with potion in the first movie and was transformed into a black cat. There's also a ton of Sanderson sisters' merchandise in the shop, including these doll versions of them here. When Gilbert reveals the Book of Spells to his audience at the shop, pause and look really closely at the straps holding Book down, in particular the little grill over the eye, which is a deliberate homage to Hannibal Lecter's mouth restraint in Silence of the Lambs. And the costume that Gilbert wears during his presentation has eyes on both the hat and the cloak referencing Book, plus there are eyes on the door he emerges through here. After Becca and Izzy arrive at the shop, you'll need to pause really quickly here to spot the Houdini poster on the wall when Cobweb appears out of nowhere. The question, do spirits return, is some sneaky foreshadowing for how Becca and Izzy, who are also in this shot, will accidentally bring the Sanderson sisters back to life later on. It's an awesome moment when the sisters finally return, with Winnie slapping both Sarah and Mary in the stomach in a deliberate hat tip to how she gut punched Sarah in the original movie. Um, 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 the song they sing here, The Witches Are Back, is an amusing take on Elton John's The Bitch Is Back. After the trio catch Becca and Izzy, the girls play a trick on them, pretending they're witches too. We only look young, but really we're 40? Oh, 40? Old folks, huh? Fine physician. This reminds me of how Max played a ruse to escape the witches in the original movie. You mess with the great and powerful Max. I summon the burning rain of death. Burning rain of death. Burning rain of death. Burning rain of death. The hilarious supermarket scene in the new film, where the Sanderson sisters gulp down beauty creams and lotions in the misguided belief they contain the souls of deceased children, is a deep cut reference to a deleted scene from the first movie. Delicious floral with a woodsy finish. It's tinkly. My favourite feeling. So far, the full deleted scene hasn't been released, but one of the original trailers for the 1993 movie does show Mary downing various liquids in a supermarket and looking to eat a child. And the sisters' funny walk they do as they explore the store is a callback to the walk they did after they came back to life in the first movie. Get 
Becca, Izzy and Cassie also pay homage to the walk at the end of the movie when they suddenly find themselves doing it without realising. When Becca and Izzy use salt to protect themselves from the sisters' dark magic, it's a nod to how Alison used salt in the first movie. And given Becca turns out to be a witch in the sequel, and Winnie remarked about Alison, What a clever little white witch! It adds to the popular fan theory that Alison was a secret witch herself all along. The brooms the sisters fly off on in the sequel get a fun update to modern cleaning and vacuum tech in 2022 compared to the 1993 movie. Sarah gets an upgraded mop, and Mary finds a pair of robot vacuums, which also play a crucial role later on when they break the salt circle keeping them trapped at the Trask household. Now, if you're wondering why Mary says cowabunga as she flies off, it's a wink to Kathy and Jimmy's role as the voice of the mayor of Witchtown in the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show. And as the three hatch their plan, which ends up being suspiciously similar to the one in the first movie, Sarah responds to Winnie with a line from the original film. The first step in their scheme is to return to their old cottage, and the way the door swings open amid flashes of light is a tribute to the same way they returned in the first movie. This time, though, Sarah is disappointed at the state of the place. Where are all the cobwebs? <gasps> And my rat tails! This is an amusing nod to the first thing she did in the OG movie after arriving back. My lucky rat tails! And the way she goes searching for her rat tails by hanging from the rafters is a throwback to when she swung from the cemetery gates in the original movie. Sarah's response to Gilbert revealing himself to the trio a boy. is a shout out to the three sisters' reaction when they first saw Thackeray Binks. <gasps> a boy! As well as to Sarah's generally boy crazy ways back in the 90s. Boys will love me! When Gilbert tells the sisters he saw them on Halloween night in 1993, he mentions a bunch of boys stole his candy, referencing the bullies Jay and Ice, who harassed Max and Danny for their Halloween candy in the original movie. And the empty cloth container that Gilbert used for his candy also looks like it's probably this Mickey and Minnie Mouse pillowcase. There's some fantastic store names at the Scarefest, such as Appleplectic, which is a play on the word apoplectic, and a stall where participants have to bob for apples. They're drowning a man! How charming! There's also Lifestyles of the Witch and Famous, a nod to the 80s and 90s reality TV series Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And there's a Bon Appetit and Grave E food stall, with a wicked witch selling poisoned apples strolling by in a reference to Disney's Snow White. And while Mer Trask is waiting in line for his caramel apple, there's a man behind him dressed like the devil and a woman wearing a dressing gown and rollers in her hair. These are a sly reference to the scene from the first movie when the sisters thought they were meeting their master, Satan himself, and also met his wife who was getting ready for bed at the time. Satan has married Medusa, see the snakes in her hair? And the scene with that couple from the first film actually appears when Winnie stumbles across another couple watching the original Hocus Pocus movie. The fact the events of the first film exist as a movie in this universe shows just how famous the Sanderson sisters are in that world. Just like the first movie, the sisters sing a song at the Halloween festival in the sequel. I bet you're looking for the stage. Always. And if you pause here, there's some nice details for the various other acts like the Broom Brigade, the Acrobats, and Hades Hotties, which is a reference to the Greek god of the underworld, who's the villain in Disney's 90s movie Hercules. When the sisters put a spell on the Scurfest audience and have them dance down the street, there's a definite vibe of the music video for Michael Jackson's Thriller. There's also some great Easter eggs in the crowd, such as this lady wearing a Madonna outfit, a reference to the costume worn by Max and Danny's mum on Halloween night. And it also looks like someone's wearing the Sorcerer Mickey Mouse hat from Fantasia. After the sisters discover Becca hiding, Winnie can't remember her name. Oh, what's her name again? Uh, Siska Baby. Which is the same thing Mary calls Danny when she finds her in the first movie, which is a pun on the food shish kebab. It's Shishka Baby. <laughs> As Trask arrives back home to find the sisters trapped in his garage, he gets out of his car and Winnie calls it a very small bus, an amusing reference to their first encounter with motorised transport in the first movie. What is this contraption? I call it a bus. When Sarah and Mary fade into dust as the price Winnie pays for the Magic Eye Maxima spell, they say goodbye in the same way they bade farewell after the sun came up in the first film. Bye bye. Goodbye. 
Bye bye. Although Billy says the final destruction of the sisters is what has now released him from the curses placed on him by Winnie, if you watch to the very end of the credits, there's a bonus scene where Cobweb reveals that Gilbert has a second black flame candle in his possession, which means we could easily see the Sanderson sisters return again for a third movie. Let me know what you think about that and any other comments below. If you love Disney movies, tap here for another video just like this. And if you enjoyed this video, do leave a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Thanks for enjoying this movie with me and hope you have a marvellous movie loving week. Yippee ki movie lovers!